everyone. This is Magdalena Wolf in Wolf und Schafe podcast. Um, and this is Domarad, uh, my little co-host, because I don't have a living animal. So <laughs> He's here to um, add to the cuteness. Say hi. Hi. Meow. <laughs> okay, so... Um, Welcome to uh, all new viewers and welcome back to uh, returning viewers, if there are some. <laughs> there would be, it would be awesome for me. Um, so yeah, this is a mostly knitting podcast, but it might be turning into knitting and spinning and hand dyeing podcast because my hobbies are just spreading. <laughs> Like, well, you know, it happens. I think it happens to you too, doesn't it? So, anyway, this is episode two. Um, it's Tuesday, January 13th of 2016. Um, and, oh yes, yeah, so uh, I uh, forgot last time to... Uh, tell you my Ravelry name, because it's uh, pretty relevant in English-speaking community. So you can find me under uh, Wolfowna. Well, in Polish it's Wolfowna, but anyway, it's it's a matter of orthography. No matter. I, I will add this uh, in the, uh, at the ending uh, script. Uh, so yeah, that's how you can find me and what it means actually, because as you know by now, my last name is Wolf, with uh, like a wolf but with two F at the end. It's a German name, and I am Polish. Uh, but anyway, um, so it is this rivalry name is actually a combination of German and Polish. Uh, which I am too, somehow. Um, so, Wolfówna is um, a form of the last name Wolf for, um, for a woman who is named Wolf. It sounds complicated, <laughs> but we have this system, well, we used to have it disappearing, actually, it's starting to get outdated uh, because we used to um, like um, show the difference between whether it's uh, it's your maiden name or your uh, name after your husband so if I married a guy named Wolf I would be Wolfova and if my father was a wolf, meaning it's my maiden name, I would be Wolfówna. <laughs> so, well, it's it's a bit archaic by now. So, you know, like Miss and Mrs., we, we make special forms for it. And for men, it's just wolf. <laughs> so, yeah, you will find me under that on Ravelry, and please feel free to contact me there or um, via this uh, YouTube, like comments, or via email that I also uh, place at the end of my video. Please feel free. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to also start with a little shout out to another podcaster who I'm recently watching a lot because he has really long episodes. Um, his name is James, and his uh, podcast is uh, Dancing Geek Podcast. Um, he's a very charming British guy, and I highly, highly recommend his podcast. I really love his episodes. They are so so nice to watch and knit along with them. It's it's really nice. So yeah, so what's on my needles? Um, oh, I will have a lot of things to show today, not only knitting. 
Um, so, uh, last week I talked about um, a favorite socks pattern by uh, Kristen from uh, Woolen Vine Yarns and uh, Yarn Gasm podcast. Hi, Kristen! Uh, and actually, I worked mostly this week, I mostly worked on these, and ta da! I have this much! And it's all tangled. <laughs> all tangled. Eek. Okay, because I I'm making two socks at the same time on magic loop. And as I said before, this is this is my first magic loop project and my first also two at the at the same time socks project. Uh, well, I'm loving it. I'm a convert to magic looping. I think the key for me was to buy uh, decent needles because the ones I tried with at first were um, not really good quality and um, it was difficult to do magic looping. Whilst with these, these are Chao Gu. Chao Gu. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I checked the accents in, in Chinese. No matter. Um, so yeah, these are Chao Gu, uh, 2.5 millimeters, uh, 120 centimeters cable. Um, and the yarn is... Um, oh yeah, now the color is better. The yarn is my yarn, Wolf und Schafe, uh, yarn in... Uh, maple and pine colorway and I'm very happy with how it is knitting up uh, and I'm just finished with the heels uh, in this pattern uh, favorite favorite sock pattern by Kristen there is the reinforced heel um, and this is the heel flap and now I will be just knitting the rest of the foot and toes. So I'm very happy. Uh, it was a bit complicated at first to um, find a way uh, with um, two socks uh, at the same time. And um, pick, I think picking up uh, stitches after the heel flap because at some point, one of the the, the sock one of the socks got blocked, and I couldn't transfer some stitches on the other side of the cable because the other sock was here and blocking. But I I just took a DPN and transferred some of the stitches to it, and then. Uh, when the opportunity appeared, arrived, I, I just uh, moved them to the right side of the cable. So yeah, you can manage with two at the same time and, uh, and uh, uh, heel flap type of sock. Um, okay, so this is, and this lives in my wonderful, wonderful cute birdie, very cute birdie project bag. Okay, uh, so this is it. And I have another project, oh, sorry. I have another project that I uh, wanted to cast on like for months. Um, tea break. Mm. So my tea this week is oolong tea, uh, very tasty. If, if you're wondering, I'm mm, a great tea fan. I never drink coffee because I simply don't like the taste, the smell, anything about coffee actually. Maybe the color is nice, but that's it for me. And I'm a um, tea geek, maybe you could say. I always use, I mean always, when I use loose tea, uh, tea leaves type of tea. I use my teapot 
and um, yeah, and I drink tea every day. <laughs> I like both green tea and black tea. I'm not a fan of red tea. White tea is okay and supposedly the most healthy one. I never add sugar to my tea uh, because it, um, it stops me from tasting the, the taste of tea. <laughs> so I just n add nothing to my tea. That, that's all. Um, yeah. Mm. Tea. Just tea. Okay. Uh, so, oh, did I show this to you last time? Did I? Because I thought that, that Kristen from Yarngasm would like it. <laughs> it's my uh, little box for stitch markers. And it's working really great because I don't lose them. And I could attach it somewhere uh, with this. The only problem is that it gets a bit... I don't know if you can see it. This figure, it's like thin metal so you might get a bit mm. well for now it works good okay so the sweater i cast on the sweater yay um when i was in took at swiss Wolle festival <clears throat> i i as i said i um met with uh, Justyna Lorkowska, the designer. She had workshops there and I went to her workshops, which were awesome. And she let us see and touch uh, her sweaters. And one of them was um, a sweater called Mira, uh, which was in, uh, back then, it was in October last year. Uh, there was, uh, the pattern was not out there yet but it was like uh, on the go and I really loved that sweater and um, after, after that um, uh, festival actually I was gifted the pattern by Justyna who was very generous and also during workshops she, she gave us various goodies um, so yeah so I have the pattern by her I believe it's um, Mira is named after her mother-in-law with whom she has really good relations and her name is Miroslava so it's uh, like short for for her name and um, it's basically um, it's a pullover with um, sleeves in stockinette stitch and the body in B stitch which uh, I really thought looked nice. So I just cast this on yesterday and I have only this much and it took me ages <laughs> because I'm slow. Um, so for the uh, for her pattern, Justina used um, Malabrigo yarn Mekita I'm not sure how to pronounce it. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, in um, Mandragora colorway, and I I happen to uh, be able to to find it in in the store as well, like online store as well. But just in a different colorway, I chose uh, this blues and teals and greens colorway and it's called sirenas meaning mermaids i think i suppose yeah uh, so that's where i am i had problems with getting the gauge right because uh it was all the time it seemed that i i have too many stitches in my gauge so uh, the pattern calls for 3.75 millimeter needles and I'm knitting on 4.5 um, and it's well it's closer to the gauge but it's kind of airy can you see can you see it it's I think it will be an airy sweater but also this is a single 
uh, yarn, I think 100% merino, it's extremely soft. The downside of it, I think it will, it might peel quite quickly because it's a single. So, well, we will see. It looks lovely for me. And this is the B stitch. Yeah, I had to learn the B stitch, <laughs> stitch for, for this because I was eyeing the, the, this stitch before, but uh, somehow I never got to using it. And I think it, it looks great, really. And also Justina chose it, she, she said so, um, because she just happened to buy variegated yarn somewhere, meaning this Mandragora colorway of, of Malabrigo. And she was like, why did I buy it? I mean, I'm totally not into variegated yarn. I don't to, like to use it on my garments. Why did I buy it? <laughs> it just was ah, shiny. And I, I just grabbed it and bought it, so she said. And then she had to like figure out what to do with it. And that's how she uh, came up with the idea for this sweater. Um, and she, she realized that the bee stitch uh, works pretty well with variegated yarn. So that's the story <laughs> of the sweater. I suppose it will take me ages to complete because, yeah, I'm not that fast. <laughs> but we will see. Um, okay, so this is all that I have on my needles because I learned, uh, learned, I worked pretty monogamously on the socks because I really want to wear them. I like how they're turning out with all the greens and browns and rust and darker greens. I, I really, I really like how they, uh, they knit up like they're mixing with each other. I like it. I'm huh, proud of myself. <laughs> so yes, um, as, as I mentioned last week, I just uh, was bitten with, with the uh, spinning bug and I think it, it will get worse. <laughs> so um, where is it? Okay, I think it's here. So I showed you my spindle before, now it's naked, <laughs> it's just my leader yarn. Um, oh yeah, about James, uh, the dancing geek, why did I happen uh, to, to find his podcast in the first place? Because I was, I was looking on YouTube on some tutorials on spinning, uh, on spindling, on the spindle, and um, he recorded a video called Spinning 101 and I loved it to bits. He really uh, did, a, did a great job there because he, um, he himself uh, has learned not so long ago, so he still remembers um, all the difficulties you come upon when, you, when you're a newbie spinner. Um, and he demonstrated all the problems that you can, all, like many problems that you can face and uh, explained it really, really nicely. So I recommend it for beginner spinners. And yeah, so this is, this is my, my uh, first spindle and this is uh, Bottom World. And I have another, that I will show you this in a moment. So this is what my teacher, I mean, uh, this is the type that my teacher from the Craftsy class that I bought, uh, Spindling from uh, Fluff to Stuff by Drusilla Pettibone. She, she uses this type of spindle and um, that's why I wanted this too, because it's easier to follow the class if you have something similar to the teacher, right? And I showed you the sorry, focusing. Uh, I showed you the um, 
ball of worms I produced from the first 50 grams of, of my uh, fiber that I got together with this spindle. And oh, oh, I'm sorry. I think I should, I should uh, pause now because I've been having some problems with my camera and I will explain everything. It's just no pause. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> Sorry for that. So I had some problems with my camera that it um, some no, camera video. I don't know what exactly it was, but the audio got um, disconnected to the video, meaning like you could see me and la 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 and then you heard what I said <laughs> so um, my husband suggested that I just make shorter videos so it will be maybe uh, less prone to to getting uh, messy well anyway my new camera is on its way so well hopefully it's just a temporary problem um, Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, where was I? Okay, so with, uh, with with this spindle, with the long draw, uh, long draw, to all long draft technique, I um, produced that ball of worms <laughs> that I showed you last week, and I had another fifty grams. Um, that went a bit better, so I decided to uh, divide this 50 grams into 25-25 uh, halves and then ply them together, like I, I learned from my course. And um, I produced this! This is my first, first hand spun yarn. It's it's so airy. That's what Trusilla says about this long draw uh, or draft. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't remember a uh, technique um, that it produces more uh, like light and airy yarn, but it's uh, also making it um, less even. So, so yeah, you can see it's not very even. And also, I did not know, I didn't realize um, that maybe 50 grams to put on one spindle is a bit too much. And I was plying it, not with this spindle, but with a smaller one. So by the end, I had like <laughs> my little spindle and a whole bump of, of yarn around it. I, I was actually worried it, it won't... Uh, fits like I don't have any more space to put my my yarn on it so uh, I learned my lesson now I will divide my fluff to smaller portions but anyway yes this is 50 grams around 50 meters um, and yeah I love it I don't know what to do with it I, I don't know I could actually dye it but it also has a really lovely natural color. I don't know. I just don't know. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Um, so yes, this is my first hand spun and the uh, fiber was uh, from Wales, West well, uh, Wales sheep. Uh, really, really nice. Um, so yeah. Uh, my other spindle that I used for plying because I was uh, I had half of like uh, half of my yarn portion on this spindle in my lazy kate. Oh, I should show this to you. Um, so it was it was used for that purpose, and then I just used this the other one that I had for plying. Uh, this is my lazy kate that I made. Uh, from just cardboard box and this is um, I made it according to instructions from Priscilla on her course and it has holes here 
here and on the other side, and then, oh, laugh at me. And then you can use a toilet paper roll, that is empty, and um, this is actually, she was using a knitting needle, but I don't have, I almost don't have straight knitting needles. I, I use mostly circulars or DPNs, but DPNs would be too short. So this is actually a chopstick, the cooking type, really long for used for in for in the kitchen for cooking. So you insert this, and and yeah, and it can roll. And here you place your your yarn for plying. So yeah, this is my awesome awesome lazy cake. And, oh, come on, go back. I think I will just make some space on my desk. Yes, so, uh, I uh, promised myself that when I'm done with the first 100 grams of the uh, Welsh fiber, I will treat myself to something colored because it's fun. And so when I was buying my dyes um, from one online store, I just, I didn't own a spindle back then, but I just, I just wanted to see what a spinning fiber feels like. And so I bought this, it looks more blue on the camera, but another trick this is a trick I learned from James's uh, James's podcast that if you have gray it turns like gray background the colors get a bit truer I don't know if they do ah do they oh maybe I don't know it worked for taking pictures so, so anyway uh, this is what I'm spinning right now, and this is Merino. I didn't start with Merino because I heard it's uh, hard to spin, uh, uh, harder to spin for beginners. Well, I don't know. It definitely is easier to break. Maybe that's the thing, that it breaks easier because it's so fine, like the... Mm, the hairs are so fine that they can part with themselves easier. But anyway, this is my other spindle that I bought. And um, this is a uh, top, top whorl spindle. And it's also meant for beginners because it has, look, it's ingenious, I think, because it's written with, with an arrow, uh, which way, Oh, it's which way to spin and which way to ply, which is handy when you're a beginner, really. So, um, so yeah, that's where I am with my, this is, this is the, f um, I had 25 grams of this and I divided in, did it in two. So it's like 12.5. Um, and this, this is the first half. Um, I still have some work to do <laughs> because it's it's producing a finer, um, finer, a finer yarn. So it takes more time to spin. And also, uh, what I what I'm doing, I'm learning the other technique, uh, meaning short draw method. I think it's short draw short draw method that you're using your both hands to draft but um, I'm not uh, letting go of the spindle yet like I I spin it and then I park it between my knees and then I spin it again I mean spin it drafts uh, spin park draft you know I'm a beginner still so uh, I still have some some practice ahead of me. And yeah, I am loving this. I I mean it's so um 
let's say addictive. I mean, once I start, I cannot put down the spindle. It's like, <laughs> uh, so yeah, together with this lovely green spindle. Oh, it has a notch here. It actually doesn't help me much because it's so small. Maybe it's meant for finer, even finer yarn because it just well, it's there, it looks nice, but I think this is really handy, I mean. <laughs> and also what I liked about it, it's, it's that it's colored, yes, uh, because most beginner spindles are just natural wood, which is uh, beautiful as well, but it's just, you know, color. There was a blue one, and I'm actually um, a bit surprised that I didn't choose the blue one, because I prefer blue to green actually but somehow this color spoke to me it was it was just very very nice so yes i did did not order only um the spin uh, together with the spindle it was al also a kit for beginners it had this lovely lovely bag it's from uh worldcraft wildcraft correct me, <laughs> uh, beginner spindle kit. See? Lovely. And it had, together with it, oh no, I put it somewhere else, it had um, also 100 grams of uh, fiber to practice on. And it had this lovely, lovely, it's, it's very lovely, um, Romney wool top, it's 50 grams in natural color and another uh, feeling totally different and um, not so soft uh, but looks very interesting um, it's Ryland wood sliver Ta-da! and I think it's another 50 grams so this is my, this was my kit but I also got tempted by lovely, lovely um, hand-dyed fiber because all oh, you know those braids they are colorful and beautiful and you just cannot say no to them so it was really not very expensive because I think it was somewhere around ten dollars I think um, it was English wool blend in even tight colorway. <gasps> Look! Isn't it gorgeous? It, it has these deep, deep colors here. And these subtle, subtle colors there. And it has greens and purples and blues and yellows. And it's, it will be really, a really, uh, fun to spin because it's not the same color all the time <laughs> so yay um this will be my treat probably when i'm finished with with these because you know uh in polish we have this uh, expression that it's a method of a stick and a carrot is it also in english please tell me because you know like you have a donkey and you you hang a carrot uh, <laughs> A, car a carrot in front of him and then he wants to to you know to eat it and that's how he's motivated so that's me working that trick on myself but this is not all this is not over with my fiber because last Sunday I met last Sunday was it I think Somewhere around that. Um, no. Sunday before that. No matter. I met with my friend Muriel and she said, Oh, you're spinning. Actually, I tried spinning before with a spindle and I realized it's not, it's not my thing, but I have um, fiber somewhere in my cellar that I'm not using and it's just lying there unused. So, would you like to have it? And I was like, Yay! Please, please, please give it to me. So
So, well, she, uh, uh, unfortunately, she doesn't know uh, what the fiber is because it was some time ago that she bought it. Oh, it's different, but there are some natural. Oh, this is different. Okay. So, uh, she obviously used up some of it, but I don't mind, really. <laughs> this is for practice. And uh, these are two types of, uh, of fiber, I think. This one is more yellowish. This one is whiter and much softer. So I got this just like that for free. And also, also I got this. Isn't it awesome? Isn't it awesome? I really, really thank you, Muriel. It's it's great and it's by uh, this one she because she uh, she put the card of the of the company in in the bag, so it's Maine Woods Yarn and Fiber. Uh, I believe it's from the United States, probably. So yeah, Maine Woods Yarn. Yay! That's so nice of her. So I will probably again make myself go through the uh, natural fiber and then as as my carrot I will use uh, the colored braid. Sorry for crinkling. Okay, okay, so this is it for spinning and I have a yarn acquisition to show you. Uh, it was my first purchase from the United States because I normally do not order from the States because it's far away and expensive, of course, to ship the product. But um, isn't this just crazy awesome? Uh, this is by A. Mary Knits on Etsy. Um, it's a sock yarn. Uh, it's 75 uh, merino 25% nylon, which is, makes it perfect for socks. Uh, and it's incredibly soft. It's really incredible. Mm. So yeah, this is one thing. But the other part of my, and the main reason of my purchase, <laughs> uh, is another thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, lol. So I thought I would show you some of my project bags because when two and a half years ago when I dove into the knitting world, um, I had no project bags, of course. I was just using plastic bags and um, my friend Muriel, when she saw that, she, well, she actually owns a sewing machine and she just made me a project bag so I wouldn't use, you know, those crinkly and easy to poke through with needles bags. And I will show this to you, but I will pause again because I'm afraid that you will see me talking and not hear what I'm saying. So um, pause and we will be back in a moment. Okay, we're back. <laughs> And uh, I forgot to tell you that this colorway is called uh, Autumn Desert Flowers. And it's really crazy. I like it. I like it a lot. So, um, what did I say? Oh, yeah. My first project bag. I have so many things to show you that I'm ju just a bit confused. Oh, yeah. So, it's here. This is the bag that Muriel made me and it's so awesome. I love it. I, I really like apples and yeah, I, I was so happy with, to have it. 
because yeah, finally, a normal, cute project bag. So this one she made me, and then I was like, I want more project bags. I will have to make myself one. And so I do not own a sewing machine. I actually do not know how to use it. People keep telling me it's easy, but yeah, I don't have it. And um, maybe I played a bit with it when I was small because my grandma was using it a lot. And she had this old type, you know, not electric one, but with a pedal that was a bit difficult for me when I was small. Um, but anyway, um, I learned at school how to sew um, by hand. We also didn't have sewing machine at school. So I know the basics and I'm not a specialist by any means. So I just, I just wanted to have something and just did everything I, I could to, <laughs> to have it. And so I found some tutorial online and, oh no, it fell down. And that's how um, I made this. I bought fabric online and I thought it was so cute with ducks and frogs. I also uh, bought a ribbon to match it because in the, in the tutorial they, there was also a handle to be made. So um, I bought a ribbon with frogs and inside there are hearts and dots and instead of the string I used some ribbon I had from some present I got from somebody. I just secured it using um, a lighter so uh, like it would me melt a bit on the, on the border and not, um, you know, uh, come off. So yeah, and what I really loved about this project is that it included pockets inside. So it also has, can you see it? It also has pockets, pockets. So you can put some notions inside, which I love. And the bottom is like, this. Yeah. So I'm pretty proud of myself for producing this. <laughs> um, and I really love the, the pattern with cute frogs and ducks. So this is my frog project bag and I think that my um, frog measuring tape should be a set with it. <laughs> so yeah. And I showed you the project bag that I bought with the birdies. And finally, oh god, where did So yeah, and finally, the bag from the States that I bought together with this. Yes. Yay! So, oh, the colors change. Okay, so I know it's not autumn, but I don't care. <laughs> They looked so awesome and funny. Actually, on the picture, I didn't see that it glitters, but it does. So it has glitter on it. Um, and it's, you know, it's totally different to, to this because I didn't put any interfacing inside. So it's not really like a little. Uh, it serves its purpose, but this is so much uh, more professional. And it has a zipper, it has a nice sturdy handle, and it has these awesome dogs. And one of them, one of them has antennae uh, with leaves, and the other one has this mono glass, how you can monocle. And they're just awesome, but that's not everything. It also has inside these chevron, uh, it's maybe not visible on the camera, but this is actually golden. It has 
also some shine to it, like the, the, the golden stripes. So yes, this is, uh, and this is big, it's big and I can keep my Amira sweater inside. And I think it's awesome and I'm so happy. And actually it arrived pretty quickly because I ordered it, I think on the 2nd of January and it arrived on the 12th. So it was quick. This is my awesome bag. So, okay, I think that's that's enough for the. Oh no, I have something else. Mm, no, but where? Oh yes. So uh, about my uh, things that I I made myself. I was for a long time. I was really annoyed by the way I was storing my DPNs. Because, you know, they come in those plastic uh, bags and it's not really something I, I like to have, like, everything in different places and it annoyed me a lot. So I wanted a um, case for my DPNs. So actually I... Uh, and I was... Uh, looking at different uh, tutorials online and they didn't have like a one that I would totally love that would be perfect for me so I designed it myself <laughs> just it's nothing fancy just simple and practical thing but I'm very proud of myself because it took me ages to sew by hand it was just I, I mean, I take so many hours to knit a sweater, but it's more, um, uh, it's more fun. It's just, yes, it's more fun to knit for me than to sew. That's the thing. But I also bought, together with those frogs, I bought a lovely, lovely fox fabric, like colorful foxes. And I made this. This is my DPN roll, and as you can see, it's not totally even, but it has a flap which prevents the needles from falling out. It has uh, inside the hearts that, that the frog and ducks project bag has. It has some interfacing, so it would be a bit stiff. And yeah, and I measured my DPNs and I adjusted the width of the pockets to them. Oh, the colors are going crazy. So here you can see that the smaller ones have thinner pockets so they wouldn't be like rolling around and the thicker ones have thicker pockets and here I have some um, free space for, for example, uh, stitch holders and other stuff. Mostly stitch holders for now. So yes, I totally love it because it's finally organized and I don't have all this plastic flying around. Um, and it just, I, I just, I just roll it like this. I just roll it like this and can carry it with me. I mean, take it when I travel and I want, don't want to be worried that I won't have something for my project, like DPNs for sleeves or something. So I have this and I'm happy. <laughs> I'm a happy owner of Fox uh, DPN case. Yes, uh, okay, I think this episode will be long as well. Normally my Polish ones would be like um, half an hour long or, or less than half an hour. I don't know why it gets so long when I talk in English. It's strange, isn't it? Okay, um, so I also have a question to you, dear viewers, if there are any viewers. Um, because my husband is going next month to the US on a business trip. He will be staying there for a few days. And I thought, hmm, <laughs> it's a good opportunity 
uh, to order something and then he could bring it to me without the shipping fees. So, uh, do you, dear viewer, have any suggestions about what he could bring me? Like what you would recommend, like fiber or yarn or spindles or what do you think would be a best um, well per purchase to, to bring from the US? Please let me know. And finally, oh no, I forgot something. So I also, together with my spindle kit and fiber I bought from the Worldcraft, I bought this book because she also sells it in her Etsy shop, so just together with my purchase I bought this. Um, it's Respect the Spindle by Abby Francamont and it's really highly recommended by many spinners, so I will just be educating myself more because I'm I love books. I just love books. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you. So I have a pr I solved my problem with DPNs, but with um, my circulars, I mostly have interchangeables um, because I bought a set of Knit Pro in the States, I think it's Knitter's Pride, it's KP, anyway. Um, and it came in um, a ugly, smelly plastic case that I really didn't like, so I got rid of it. And um, and I bought in, in the store, that, um, like a Polish online store, um, I bought a case for high higher needles because it was beautiful, just beautiful. And I thought if it can fit for higher higher interchangeables, why not for Knit Pro? It's really no big deal. So yes, I bought this and it's higher higher. And it's you know this Asian style looking. Yeah. Shiny, it has so it, it's black with red, they also have blue with red, with, which also looks awesome. Uh, yeah. So I can untie it and inside, <laughs> inside I have my DPNs. I, so my problem is these are very loose and I tried various things, for example, putting a tissue here so that the needles wouldn't fall off but they still do. I used to tie them with rubber band, but then the rubber band would get, uh, you know, get old and just come apart and stick to the needles, which was a little gross. So, so yeah, that's my problem with these. It really falls out easily. Also, if I put something, there are pockets here as well, but then they, they will fall off like this, yeah, see? Like my darning needles. <laughs> so, it really annoys me. And, oh, and it also have, has a great thing here. There's a pocket for your cables, for interchangeables and other notions and whatnot. I also have here, I also have here, my Sailor V, which I love. I just love this character and my friend when she was uh, in Japan, she she just um, she drew, drew it from a machine like you know you can uh, just when, when you play a game and you can draw some prizes or something. So she happened to draw her and then she suggested that she will give it to me and I was yeah yes please do so that's my sailor v with my interchangeable so what i'm doing right now is to um i'm using a piece of cloth i have with cherry blossom pattern it's long and i just to i just wrap it around 
this case because this way the needles don't fall off from the sides but it's still bugging me it's beautiful but not perfect because it lacks the flap on the sides the flap there is a flap on the top but it lacks the flap on the sides which is which is just bad okay okay finally there is the last section um, hand dyeing I'm uh, I've recently opened my Etsy shop it's called Wolf und Schafe meaning in German wolf and sheep meaning me of course and uh, <laughs> fibers around me mostly yarn and uh, okay so this week I dyed quite a lot of things for example oh this is my label yay cute there is a description there so this color is called Momotaro and it's inspired by um, a hero from Japanese legends. It's basically about a boy who was born out of a peach. He was inside a peach and yes, that's why he was... because Momo is peach in Japanese and it's like a peach boy. So um, I made this peach color like um, pale pinks, uh, deeper pinks, uh, oranges, um, different shades of it, which I, when I look at it, I just, I just want to smell peaches. I almost smell peaches. And uh, these are on different bases. Um, this one is on BFL, the DK weight, because when I ordered, um, my undyed yarn I also um, because I, I buy them in, in like five hanks packages but you can also buy sample yarns meaning only one hank of it so uh, I bought this to try out it's lovely it's BFL so it it's more sturdy than merino, but it's still very, very soft and very nice. Um, so this is Momotaro on this BFL, DK weight, and this is as well Momotaro, but on um, merino nylon cashmere base, 80% merino and 10, 10 for cashmere and nylon. Uh, this is just extremely squishy and soft. So I love it. And um, I call this, this is fingering weight and I call this Belladonna. And I will explain about my bases in a minute, but I have to pause again. And I think it means I already have one hour. I'm turning into you, James. How did that happen? <laughs> okay, um, let's pause. And we're back. I'm almost done. Really, really, uh, I hope so, because I have to go out soon. <laughs> um, I was not prepared to make such a long episode. All right, so, um, as you could see before, I was uh, dyeing up some variegated yarn, but I also am... Um, doing now some solids so this this is uh, I call it juniper smoke or is it pronounced juniper if I'm wrong correct me again I mean the plant so it's um, it's muted blue but, but with some hints of purple underneath because I made this in layers and I think it look, would look great on, on a sweater, I think. And it's on my Medina it, uh, base. This is um, fingering for ply 100% uh, superwash Polworth wool. Um, yes, and this 
I think I showed this to you before, but on uh, thicker yarn, this is also four ply fingering. Um, but this is 75% um, merino and 25% tassa silk and on my how base. And its colorway is called Silver Towers. And I love how this is silvery and the silk, you know, shines. So it makes it even more silver. Um, so I made also more solids. Uh, I made these like as a set. This one is olive tree because when I went to Greece, for the first time in my life, I was surprised to see the, um, you know, um, oh, how it's called, the, the orchard with like many, many olive trees. I didn't know that their uh, leaves were actually muted pale green. I, I, I didn't know that and it looked awesome, awesome and I loved it. So this is, this is my olive tree um, and this is uh, this is fir, this or fir tree, yes. And the base is rare. Uh, it's DK weight, one hundred percent merino, not superwash. And we come to these two babies. I love them. The colorway is um, rose quartz in ice because it is, uh, it has those pale pinks. Maybe it's a bit different on the camera, but yes, it has this, these pale pinks here and it has these icy blues and a bit of purple and it's on my uh, paw base. It's 75% uh, superwash wool and 25% nylon. I'm speaking quicker because I have to go <laughs> soon. So yeah, my bases, um, they are all connected to, to the wolf in my, in my brand, uh, because, um, for example, uh, I have this uh, Rea, meaning it's from Rea Silvia that appears in the myth about Romulus and Remus. And I have both those bases as well. I have Romulus for um, worsted weight merino and Remus for fingering weight. And uh, how, of course, with, with the sil tassa silk, how because you do whoo when you feel it <laughs> like a wolf. Um, Belladonna, the one with Kashmir, is this is actually. Uh, language word play because in Polish it's a name for Bella we have two names for this plant and it's uh, Belladonna or um, Wolfberry so that's how <laughs> that's how it became name of my base and paw for sock yarn it's well logical wouldn't you say <laughs> uh, okay I think that's it. What do they? Oh, Medena. Medena is a name of a Lithuanian uh, goddess who would appear together with wolves. She was connected to them. So that's how she happened to be in the name of my base. <laughs> and okay, so thank you for watching. Um, and hopefully we will see you next week. Um, Happy knitting! Bye!